Pacifica, this is Democracy Now! I think the Birmingham Civil Rights Institute not only owes uh, me an apology personally, but uh, should apologize uh, to uh, all people who stand on the side of justice. In a Democracy Now! exclusive, the scholar and activist Angela Davis speaks out days after the Birmingham Civil Rights Institute rescinds a human rights award for her, apparently due to her activism for Palestinian rights and support of the boycott, divestment and sanctions movement targeting Israel. The Institute's move has sparked widespread condemnation. Birmingham's mayor said he was dismayed by the decision. The Birmingham City Council unanimously passed a resolution recognizing the life work of Davis, who is from Birmingham. Dr. Angela Davis will respond to the news and talk about her decades-long record of supporting Palestinian rights. We need to engage in the kind of conversation uh, that will uh, reveal uh, the, 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 the true meaning of anti-Semitism uh, and um, help us to extricate ourselves from this uh, uh, McCarthyite uh, effort to equate uh, boycott strategies uh, and solidarity strategies with anti-Semitism. We will also talk to Angela Davis about the recent anti-BDS bill in the U.S. Senate and CNN's firing of Mark Lamont Hill after he spoke up for Palestinian rights at the United Nations. All that and more coming up. Welcome to Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. Some 800,000 federal workers who've been furloughed or forced to work without compensation will receive no paycheck today, as the partial government shutdown stretches into its 21st day with no resolution in sight. On Thursday, government workers and their unions stage rallies outside federal buildings across the United States. This is Elaine Suriano, a furloughed EPA scientist, speaking at a protest in Washington, D.C. To someone, and I've asked them if I can get a loan for a mortgage if this doesn't, I mean, my mortgage payment if this doesn't end at the end of January. So, and if it continues longer, I'll have to go into my retirement money. To, to pay the bills. The bills keep coming. They don't stop. The protests came as President Trump traveled to McAllen, Texas, along the U.S.-Mexico border Thursday to repeat his demand for more than $5 billion in funding for a border wall. In what would be an unprecedented move, Trump is considering declaring a national emergency in a bid to circumvent Congress. He's ordered the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers to look into raiding funds from a $13.9 billion disaster relief bill meant to help Puerto Rico, Florida, Texas and California recover from deadly hurricanes and wildfires. After a photo op at the border, Trump granted an interview to Fox News host Sean Hannity, who was reportedly given special access to the president by White House Deputy Chief of Staff Bill Shine, a former Fox News executive. Now, you said earlier today that it's likely, that you're very likely going to declare a national emergency. How soon would that happen? No, if we don't make a deal with Congress, most likely I will do that. I, I would actually say I would. I can't imagine any reason why not, because I'm allowed to do it. Uh, the law is 100 percent on my side. In fact, many legal scholars and lawmakers say such a move would violate federal law and could set a dangerous precedent. Carol Rose of the American Civil Liberties Union said, quote, he can try, but he's going to be challenged in court by the ACLU and by about a million other groups, unquote. Trump's visit was met by protesters who rallied on both sides of the border, in Reynosa, Mexico, and McAllen, Texas. Efren Olivares of the Texas Civil Rights Project said Trump was stoking racism, xenophobia, and fears about a crime epidemic that doesn't exist. The crime rate is much lower here than it is in Houston and Dallas and Austin. So it's a 
total falsehood that there's crime, that the crime rates are high, or that there's a security crisis. People have homes right next to the river, and they live there peacefully without any fence or without any wall. That's the way it's been for generations. Now we have this president that, with a rhetoric of xenophobia and racism, is trying to make people who are not from here believe that there's a crisis. But the people who live here, we know what it's like, and we know that it's completely false that there's a crisis in the border. On Capitol Hill, there are no signs that lawmakers will resolve the government shutdown anytime soon, after eight House Republicans joined Democrats in approving spending bill that would reopen the Treasury Department while funding the IRS as tax season gets underway. Senate Republican Majority Leader Mitch McConnell refused to schedule a vote Thursday on a companion bill, calling it a political stunt. In climate news, a major new study published in the journal Science finds the world's oceans are absorbing heat at a far faster rate than previously predicted, a finding with troubling implications for the future of life on Earth. The study found greenhouse gas emissions are warming the oceans 40 percent faster than even the dire predictions made by the U.N.'s top climate scientists five years ago. The authors write, quote, this warming has contributed to increases in rainfall intensity, rising sea levels, the destruction of coral reefs, declining ocean oxygen levels, and declines in ice sheets, glaciers, and ice caps in the polar regions. The Pentagon says it's begun the process of withdrawing U.S. troops from Syria, as ordered by President Trump, but declined to comment on its planned timetable or the movement of troops. The reported U.S. withdrawal came as Turkey said it would invade parts of Syria controlled by Kurdish militias unless the U.S. rapidly completed a withdrawal. This is Turkey's foreign minister. But if this process is prolonged or extended over a period of time, and as I have said before, if they delay this process with false and absurd excuses, like unreal statements such as Turks will slaughter the Kurds, then we will put this decision of starting an operation in east of Euphrates into practice. In Egypt, Secretary of State Mike Pompeo presented his vision for U.S. policy in the Middle East in a speech at Cairo University Thursday that Times directly contradicted President Trump. Trump. Pompeo promised the U.S. will expel every last Iranian boot from Syria, even as the president has vowed to remove 2,000 troops from the region. Pompeo repeatedly attacked former President Barack Obama throughout the address, telling his audience, quote, the age of self-inflicted American shame is over. President Trump has made the decision to bring our troops home from Syria. We always do, and now is the time. But this isn't a change of mission. We remain committed to the complete dismantling of ISIS, the ISIS threat and the ongoing fight against radical Islamism in all of its forms. But as President Trump has said, we're looking to our partners to do more. And in this effort, we will do so going forward together. For our part, airstrikes in the region will continue as targets arise. Pompeo did not mention gross human rights abuses committed in Egypt under President Abdel Fattah el-Sisi or the 50,000 political prisoners human rights groups say are currently blocked up in Egyptian jails, locked up in Egyptian jails. Pompeo will continue his Mideast tour over the weekend with plans to meet with Gulf Arab leaders, including a visit with the Saudi royal family in Riyadh. During his Cairo speech, Pompeo barely mentioned Saudi Arabia, and not once did he mention why. Washington Post columnist Jamel Khashoggi, who was reportedly killed and dismembered by a Saudi hit squad October 2nd inside the Saudi consulate in Istanbul, Turkey, before his body parts were smuggled away. On Capitol Hill Thursday, lawmakers mark the 100th day since the killing. Both Congress and the CIA have determined Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman very likely ordered the assassination, although Pompeo and President Trump have disputed the conclusion. This is how Speaker Nancy Pelosi. The murder of, of Khashoggi is an atrocity and an affront to humanity. And the days after his disappearance, 
members of Congress, both sides of the aisles, both sides of Congress, demanded information and dedicated ourselves to holding the perpetrators accountable. In Washington, D.C., police arrested five activists Wednesday for holding banners outside the Supreme Court, calling for an end to torture and the closure of the prison at the U.S. naval base in Guantanamo Bay, Cuba. The protests came on the 17th anniversary of the opening of Guantanamo in the wake of the 9-11 attacks. Forty men remain languishing there. Many of them have yet to face a trial. This comes as McClatchy is reporting CIA director Gina Haspel ran a secret agency black site for prisoners at Guantanamo. The claim is based on a partially redacted transcript of a secret hearing at Guantanamo last November. Haspel was responsible for running a secret CIA black site in Thailand in 2002, where at least one prisoner was waterboarded and tortured in other ways during her tenure. Haspel also saw the over the oversaw the destruction of videotapes showing torture at the black site. But she was previously not known to have operated out of Guantanamo. In Venezuela, President Nicolas Maduro was inaugurated Thursday to a second six-year term overseeing an economy that's in free fall amidst U.S.-led economic sanctions aimed at ending his presidency. Maduro has accused the U.S., along with Canada and 12 Latin American allies, of plotting a coup against his socialist government. Maduro repeated the claim at Thursday's inauguration. Venezuela is the center of a world war of U.S. imperialism and its allied governments, and they have tried to turn this formal, legal, constitutional and peaceful ceremony into a world war against our country. The U.S. and its allies have refused to recognize Maduro's presidency, calling last year's election illegitimate. Other Latin American leaders, including Evo Morales of Bolivia, Daniel Ortega of Nicaragua and Miguel Diaz-Canal of Cuba, welcomed Maduro's re-election and joined their Thursday's inauguration in Caracas. The Trump administration's continued to ratchet up sanctions against Venezuela, even as its economy faces hyperinflation with severe shortages of food and medicine. About three million Venezuelans have left the country in recent years, with many settling in Colombia and Brazil. In Brazil, newly inaugurated far-right President Jair Bolsonaro said Wednesday he'll pull out of a United Nations agreement protecting the rights of migrants. Brazil joins just a handful of countries led by the United States that refuse to ratify the Global Compact for Safe, Orderly and Regular Migration. Last month, more than 160 other nations have signed on. Back on Capitol Hill, Vermont Independent Senator Bernie Sanders was joined Thursday by Democratic House members as they introduced legislation to dramatically roll back prices that Americans pay for prescription drugs. The bill would allow the Health and Human Services Secretary to negotiate for lower prices while pegging the price of prescription drugs to the median price in five industrialized countries. It would also allow Americans to import lower-cost drugs from Canada and other countries. This is Ilhan Omar. Omar, freshman congressperson from Minnesota. I believe that health care is a basic human right. Americans pay the highest prices to access the drugs in the world, including three times the price of drugs in Great Britain alone. And instead of taking donations from pharmaceutical industry, we need to hold them accountable for taking advantage of the American people. Medications are too expensive, and we must act boldly to lower prices. Senator Bernie Sanders apologized Thursday to women who have come forward to say they were sexually harassed or discriminated against by male staffers while working on his 2016 campaign. The accusation surfaced after more than two dozen staffers penned a letter to Sanders requesting a meeting to discuss sexual violence and harassment on the 2016 campaign in the run-up to the 2020 election. Several of Sanders' top aides have been implicated. This is Senator Sanders speaking Thursday. It appears uh, that as part of our campaign, uh, there were some women who were harassed or, or mistreated. And I thank them from the bottom of my heart for speaking out. Uh, what they experienced was absolutely unacceptable and certainly not what a progressive campaign or any campaign uh, should be about. In other news on Sanders' possible run for president, his 2016 campaign manager, Jeff Weaver, has said he will not return to the same position if Sanders decides to run for president again. But Weaver is expected to stay on as a senior advisor. 
President Trump's former personal attorney and fixer, Michael Cohen, said Thursday he'll testify to a House committee next month about his work for Donald Trump. Cohen has been sentenced to three years in prison for tax evasion, bank fraud, campaign finance violations and lying to Congress, after admitting he broke federal campaign finance laws by paying hush money to two women during the 2016 presidential campaign, in coordination with and at the direction of President Trump. This comes as The Washington Post reports the White House has added 17 new lawyers to its legal team in recent weeks, as President Trump and his inner circle braced for Robert Mueller to complete his investigation. A key Republican lawmaker and close ally of President Trump defended white supremacy while assailing the diversity of the incoming lawmakers in an interview published Thursday. Iowa Congressmember Steve King told The New York Times, quote, white nationalist, white supremacist, Western civilization, how did that language become offensive? Why did I sit in classes teaching me about the merits of our history and our civilization, unquote? Congressmember King went on to criticize the freshman class of Democratic lawmakers Makers with its record number of women and people of color, saying, quote, you could look over there and think the Democratic Party is no country for white men, King said. And in Montgomery, Alabama, an African-American transgender woman was murdered over the weekend in what the Human Rights Campaign reports was the first known act of deadly violence against a trans person in the U.S. in 2019. 31-year-old Dana Martin was found in her car in a roadside ditch with a fatal gunshot. No arrests have been made. An ACLU of Alabama spokesperson said, quote, Dana Martin's death is representative of the continuing danger that transgender individuals face simply for being themselves. And those are some of the headlines. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. The Birmingham Civil Rights Institute is continuing to come under fire after rescinding a human rights award for the scholar, civil rights activist and author Angela Davis. In September, the Institute announced it would award Davis the Fred L. Shuttlesworth Award, named after the civil rights icon. But last Friday, the Institute voted to withdraw the award and cancel this year's gala event in February. Davis is a Birmingham, Alabama native who grew up in a neighborhood known as Dynamite Hill because it was bombed so frequently by the Ku Klux Klan. The Institute rescinded the award days after the Birmingham Holocaust Education Center sent a letter urging the board to reconsider honoring Davis. According to AL.com, the January 2nd letter cited Davis's, quote, recent outspoken support of the boycott, divestment and sanctions campaign against Israel, which is very troubling as it targets the Jewish people excessively, the letter said. It went on to state, we do not suggest that Israel should be immune from criticism, but BDS ignores gross human rights transgressions by other countries around the world and focuses solely on Israel, the world's only Jewish state. Unquote. Others in the Birmingham area criticized Davis for her support for the Black Panthers and Communist Party. The Institute's decision to rescind the award has sparked outrage in Birmingham and around the country. Birmingham Mayor Randall Woodfin said he was dismayed by the Institute's decision, which he said came after, quote, protests from our local Jewish community and some of its allies, unquote. The Birmingham City Council voted unanimously to express support for Dr. Davis, as did the Birmingham School Board. In addition, more than 350 academics have signed on to a letter supporting Davis that was organized by Jewish Voice for Peace. The letter states in part, quote, The decision seems to stem from a misinformed view that to advocate for Palestinian human rights is somehow offensive to the Jewish community, unquote. Meanwhile, three members of the Birmingham Civil Rights Institute have resigned, including the chair and first vice chair, following calls for their ouster over the controversy. Angela Davis is now scheduled to attend an alternative event in Birmingham next month, on the same night she would have come for the Shuttlesworth event, which is being organized by a coalition of grassroots groups. Well, on Thursday, I spoke with Angela Davis in her first television interview since the controversy began. She joined us from Oakland, California. 
I began by asking her to respond to the Birmingham Civil Rights Institute decision to rescind the award, honoring her with the Fred Shuttlesworth Award. When they informed me that I had been chosen to be the 2018 recipient of the Fred Shuttlesworth Human Rights Award, I was quite um, honored, uh, and uh, I was looking forward to returning to um, uh, the, the, the place where I was uh, born and, and, and raised. Uh, uh, by the way, I did know Fred Shuttlesworth, uh, uh, and I went to school with uh, his daughter, uh, Patricia. So it was, it was um, quite an exciting development. Uh, uh, last Saturday, uh, I uh, sur surmised, shortly before they released the statement, the Birmingham Civil Rights Institute contacted me and simply read the statement to me. Um, when I uh, made requests to them to offer me more substantive uh, reasons uh, for the rescission of the award, uh, uh, I was uh, met with responses, um, very abstract responses, such as, it's a matter of public record. Uh, and so, during the very brief phone call, I really did not know uh, uh, what it was that had, had caused them to uh, uh, take that uh, position. It was only um, after uh, I was informed that an article had appeared in the magazine Southern Jewish Life that uh, basically detailed uh, some of my activism uh, around Palestinian human rights uh, for BDS uh, against some of the policies and practices of, of the state of, of Israel. Uh, I don't think uh, they were aware that uh, the response would be so immediate and so overwhelmingly uh, in favor of my receiving the award. I have heard from literally hundreds of individuals and organizations, uh, 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 letters are being circulating circulated not only by Jewish Voice for Peace, but by um, um, historians, uh, I think it's the American Historical Society, I may be wrong, one of the professional organizations uh, that uh, 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 includes scholars who do work on civil rights. Uh, I have been um, contacted by many people in, in Birmingham. Uh, some of my oldest friends are involved in organizing the uh, event, the alternative event, which is scheduled to take place on the same day uh, that the uh, Birmingham Civil Rights uh, Institute event uh, was uh, originally to take place. It's actually quite— um, um, exciting uh, to see the issue of, uh, of, of, of Palestinian justice, justice for Palestine, uh, uh, emerge as a um, uh, topic of popular discourse. We have attempted for so long to encourage a conversation like this. I don't know whether I enjoy being at the center of the controversy. I think I've had my share of controversies in my life, uh, um, but uh, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to uh, assist in the process of uh, encouraging more discussion on racism, on anti-Semitism, on, on, on justice for Palestine. I want to turn to Birmingham Mayor Randall Woodfin, who said in a statement, as I consider the controversy over the Birmingham Civil Rights Institute's decision to honor Dr. Angela Davis with the Fred L. Shuttlesworth Human Rights Award and its subsequent decision to rescind that honor after protests from our local Jewish community and some of its allies, my overriding feeling is one of dismay. Why am I dismayed? I'm dismayed because this controversy might have been avoided entirely had it been handled differently. I am dismayed because, as has been the case throughout Birmingham's history, people of goodwill behaved reflexively rather than engaging in meaningful discourse over their differences and seeking common ground. I am dismayed because this controversy is playing out in a way that harks backward rather than forward, that portrays us as the same Birmingham 
Birmingham we always have been, rather than the one we want to be. I'm dismayed because I believe that we should be able to expect better from ourselves and from one another. Again, that's the uh, those are the words of the mayor of Birmingham, Mayor Randall Woodfin, the youngest mayor in more than 120 years, who even has offered to facilitate a conversation. Interestingly, he's on the board of the Birmingham Civil Rights uh, Museum, the as it's known, the uh, Birmingham um, Civil Rights Institute, but was not included in that emergency phone call or the executive phone call that was held last Friday uh, in, in the vote that took place that a number of people are demanding notes be revealed about that led to the announcement on Saturday, Angela Davis. Your thoughts on Mayor Woodfin's response? Uh, well, first of all, I uh, find it uh, very exciting that uh, Birmingham now has a, a mayor who is bold and outspoken and willing to take risk and who has uh, certainly played an important role in generating um, the, the, the protest against the decision of the board of the Birmingham Civil Rights Institute. Uh, uh, I am aware of the fact that he is an ex officio member of the board, as is Odessa Woolfolk, who is um, uh, the person who uh, has been, over the years, the driving force for the creation and the continuation of this uh, institute. Uh, uh, she was, um, uh, by the way, my Sunday school teacher. Uh, I think she's about 10 years older than I am. And uh, she was an ex she's an ex officio member of the board and the chair emerita. I don't think that she was involved in, in the discussion uh, at all. Uh, uh, so it's, it's interesting that they are unwilling to uh, reveal precisely what their process uh, was, uh, and that uh, we are left to speculate about the influences that were responsible for this decision. But, but, but let me say, I think it's important— um, not to uh, generalize about uh, the Jewish community in, in Birmingham, uh, just as uh, I would suggest we not generalize about the, the black community there, are, are people representing very different uh, uh, political uh, positions uh, in both communities. I am aware that there are um, uh, progressive members of the Jewish community there. I know that Jewish Voice for Peace— um, um, has contacts in in in, in Birmingham. I, um, I I think it's important as we engage in discussion around this controversy to be um, aware of the extent to which uh, uh, um, anti-Semitism uh, can uh, also uh, be um, um, a force here. Uh, uh, so I would just guard against characterizing the Jewish community in, in, in Birmingham in such sweeping terms. Scholar and civil rights activist Angela Davis, the Birmingham Civil Rights Institute, <clears throat> recently rescinded a human rights award, apparently due to her activism for Palestinian rights. We'll return to Angela Davis in a minute. <laughs> Language of Peace by Lethal Skills and Shadi Mansour. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. 
I'm Amy Goodman, as we return to my conversation with the scholar, professor, civil rights leader Angela Davis. The Birmingham Civil Rights Institute recently rescinded a human rights award for her, apparently due to her activism for Palestinian rights. This issue of your support for Palestine and Palestinians um, and the boycott, divest, sanctions movement, can you talk about that? Uh, would you describe yourself as a supporter of BDS, and what does that mean? Oh, absolutely. I have never concealed my support for the boycott sanctions uh, movement. As a matter of fact, uh, when BDS was created uh, in 2005, I believe, as uh, uh, a response um, to uh, efforts by Palestinian civil society to take measures uh, that uh, are in the spirit of the civil rights movement. As a matter of fact, uh, uh, it has been characterized as a nonviolent effort by Palestinian civil society uh, to challenge uh, the, 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 the repression uh, that is so pervasive in occupied Palestine. Uh, I have been a supporter of uh, uh, justice for Palestine almost as long as I can remember, at least since my uh, years in, in college. Uh, more recently, I have been uh, uh, perhaps— uh, uh, attempting to guarantee, along with many others, that the issue of justice for Palestine uh, be placed on social justice agendas more broadly. Uh, and it is, uh, I think, the fact that, that those of us who have been doing this work over the last, uh, I would say, seven or eight years, nine years, the last decade or so, have been relatively successful. Uh, there are um, there is uh, support for justice for Palestine on college campuses across the country. Particularly, uh, black student formations have embraced uh, this cause. Uh, we know that uh, in 2014, when the Ferguson uprising uh, took place, when the Ferguson protests uh, erupted, it was uh, Palestinian activists. Uh, who were the first to express solidarity and, as such, uh, uh, helped to um, help to develop a global solidarity movement for Black Lives Matter. Uh, um, so I, um, I I I think that the characterization of the BDS uh, as um, a um, as a way of acknowledging the the, the South African uh, the boycott against South African apartheid and using using those strategies within the current situation is a, is, is is absolutely accurate. Uh, so I have been yes I've been involved in, in 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 the effort to encourage professional organizations. I'm a member of. Uh, the American um, Studies Association, ASA, was one of the first professional organizations to develop a resolution uh, uh, supporting the boycott, uh, the National Women's Studies Association. So I've been involved, actually, in many different contexts uh, to uh, help incorporate uh, the a call for justice for Palestine. Uh, in our social justice agendas more broadly. Um, and, of course, you wrote the 2015 book, Freedom is a Constant Struggle, Ferguson, Palestine and the Foundations of a Movement. Um, I wanted to read more from the letter from the Birmingham Holocaust Education Center to the Birmingham Civil Rights Institute. They said, We don't suggest Israel should be immune from criticism, but BDS ignores gross human rights transgressions by other countries around the world and focuses solely on Israel, the world's only Jewish state. The Reverend Martin Luther King Jr. said, when people criticize Zionists, they mean Jews. You are talking anti-Semitism, they said, quoting Dr. King. Can you respond to this, Angela Davis? Well, first of all, as I pointed out, BDX emerged from Palestinian civil society, uh, uh, and its purpose is precisely to focus on um, Israel, just as the boycott 
against South African apartheid was focused on uh, the South African apartheid state. Uh, so the first um, um, criticism they propose, I don't think, is valid at all. Um, Dr. King may have made uh, the, that uh, uh, statement indicating that peop when people uh, criticize Zionists, they are criticizing Jews uh, uh, at a particular moment in history. But I am certain that if he were alive today, he would, uh, he would point out uh, that, um, that justice is indivisible. As a matter of fact, uh, uh, he argued that uh, for the indivisibility of justice, justice anywhere, he wrote, is an assault to justice everywhere. So I'm quite certain uh, that, uh, that, that he would not remain silent on the question of uh, the uh, occupation, the continued occupation of Palestine, uh, the segregation that recalls uh, the segregation uh, uh, in South Africa and the segregation in the southern states during the pre-civil rights uh, era. Uh, um, and I'm certain that he would identify with Palestinian activists who have taken up uh, strategies developed by the U.S. civil rights movement. Um, you know, for example, uh, the Palestinian freedom riders, uh, uh, who were inspired by the freedom riders of the civil rights era, uh, in attempting to protest the segregation of um, highways, uh, of thoroughfares. Uh, uh, that lead from one settlement to another settlement, and from which Palestinians are barred. Uh, uh, yeah, the trip that I made to Palestine in 2011 with um, a delegation of uh, women of color and indigenous uh, feminists uh, was revelatory uh, in a way that I had never expected. Uh, I, I thought that I was aware of the conditions in occupied Palestine, but when I visited Hebron and actually saw signs that barred uh, Palestinian automobiles uh, and, and, and Palestinian pedestrians from certain uh, streets, my response was, Segregation in Alabama uh, did not uh, did not bar black people from the thoroughfares. Uh, so in many ways, it, it 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 seemed to me to be even worse than the segregation of my childhood. Uh, I think the world needs to speak out against these conditions. Now, of course, as you pointed out, the Jewish community is not monolithic. A Jewish Voice for Peace condemned the decision by the Birmingham Civil Rights Institute. Over 350 academics across the country signed on to the JVP academic letter in support of Angela Davis. The letter reads, quote, The canceling of this award by the Birmingham Civil Rights Institute is unjust, insulting and ill-conceived, especially because it's likely premised on Professor Davis's longstanding support for Palestinian human rights. The decision seems to stem from a misinformed view that to advocate for Palestinian human rights is somehow offensive to the Jewish community. The letter goes on to state, as a Jewish organization dedicated to justice, dignity and equality for all people in Palestine, Israel, we share Professor Davis's visionary commitment to the indivisibility of justice and believe we are all responsible for pursuing social justice for all human beings without exception, which includes pursuing social justice for Palestinians. Professor Davis, you're talking about um, not only what happened uh, with the canceling of the award to you, but then the organizing that's taken place around both the issue and in support of you. Yes, that's actually quite exciting. Um, as, 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 as I said, um, uh, the, 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 the issue of— um, of Palestinian human rights uh, and its relation to the struggle for civil rights for people of African descent in this country is finally uh, being discussed in an open way. 
And I'm, I'm quite excited that uh, grassroots um, activists, uh, local organizations, uh, established figures uh, in the Birmingham uh, community, uh, professionals, uh, um, uh, people who were uh, involved in the civil rights movement um, over a half century ago, have all come together to try to um, uh, make the point that the board of the Birmingham Civil Rights Institute does not represent the sentiment of people in Birmingham, Alabama. And I am uh, looking forward to uh, returning to Birmingham on Feb February 16th and participating in a range of events that are being organized by activists on the ground there. Well, let me go to a controversy that happened, well, a few months before you, um, about CNN contributor—well, former CNN contributor and Temple University professor Mark Lamont Hill, who was recently fired by CNN for giving a speech at the United Nations supporting Palestinian rights in November. CNN dropped him as a commentator after conservatives and pro-Israel groups, such as the Anti-Defamation League, condemned his comments, calling them anti-Semitic. Well, last month, Juan Gonzalez and I spoke to Mark Lamont Hill about his firing. I was specifically calling or speaking to my belief uh, that a one-state solution is the most fair, just and workable possibility right now. I did call for a free Palestine, uh, and a one-state solution for me is the way to do that. Many people responded, however, and were frustrated by that or, or said that I was somehow secretly dog-whistling for violence. Uh, I found that a bit hard to believe. There is absolutely a long tradition of black support. Uh, for Palestinians, there's a long support of black internationalism. Uh, and we, if we're going to be honest, there has been a long and deep support of African Americans uh, and blacks throughout the diaspora for the state of Israel. So we can't ignore that history either. There, there, but it's a long and complicated story. Uh, but I think in the last uh, 51 years, I would say since the, uh, the Six Day War, uh, we've seen the black left for sure engage in a kind of internationalism that looks for solidarity, not just in Palestine, but with movements in Africa, movements in Latin America, an attempt to really shore up a base and a community of freedom fighters that understand that inequality and injustice is not local, but it's a transnational experience. And that in order to redress any problems we have, we have to look internationally. That's what Malcolm X was attempting to do. That's what Martin King was doing toward the end of his life. That's what the Black Panthers were doing. Uh, and when we look at current movements, like uh, Black Lives Matter, one of the first things uh, that I found impressive about the Black Lives Matter movement was the fact that they were looking internationally. That's Temple University professor Mark Lamont Hill, who remains a professor at Temple, but was fired by CNN. He tweeted on Monday, this is shameful. I stand with my dear sister and friend, Angela Davis, responding to the rescinding of the award for you, Professor Davis. Um, your thoughts on this kind of pressure uh, being brought on, well, people like Mark Lamont Hill? Well, um, it was absolutely shameful for CNN to capitulate to uh, pressure and uh, fire Mark Lamont Hill. He was speaking at an event that takes place every year at uh, the United Nations on Palestine Solidarity Day. Uh, uh, so are, are, are they suggesting that they will attack everyone who uh, speaks at the UN on Palestine Solidarity Day under the guise uh, that uh, uh, they are um, anti-Semitic? Uh, I think it's time for a conversation on what constitutes anti-Semitism, the relationship between anti-Semitism and racism, and the difference between critiques of the state of, 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 of Israel, critiques of the occupation of Palestine, uh, uh, and um, anti-Semitism. Of course, uh, all of us reserve the right to criticize uh, uh, the the uh, the United States of America, the government, especially during this period. No one would argue uh, that by criticizing the government, we are criticizing all of the people of the U.S. As a matter of fact, I think it's very important 
to point out that there is a significant resistance among Jewish citizens of Israel inside Israel. Uh, uh, when I um, uh, visited uh, Palestine and Israel in um, 2011, I had the opportunity to speak with uh, a Jewish activists uh, who were uh, opposed to the occupation of, of Palestine. Uh, so I think that uh, uh, with attacks on people like Mark Lamont Hill and uh, the organizers of the, the Women's March, uh, so it seems as if there may be an effort to prevent black solidarity uh, with, with Palestine. I, 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 you know, I don't um, subscribe to conspiracy theories, uh, but it seems as if we're witnessing a consistent attack on uh, particularly radical black activists who are encouraging international solidarity uh, with many struggles in other places, but especially with the Palestinians. Scholar and human rights activist Angela Davis, a daughter of Birmingham, Dr. Davis is a professor emerita at the University of California, Santa Cruz. We'll continue with my conversation with her in a minute. Walking down to Birmingham, way down south in Dixieland. Oh, I thought that I would stop a while, take a vacation, southern style. Got some southern hospitality down there in a southern hospital. Oh, all the signs said, welcome in, signed by Governor Wallace and Rin Tin Tin. They said, come along and watch the fights while we feed our dogs on civil rights. Now, don't get us wrong. Some of our best Negroes are friends. Talking Birmingham Jam by Phil Oaks. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. As I return to my conversation with Angela Davis, the scholar, human rights activist, former Black Panther, for more than four decades, Davis has been one of the most influential activists and intellectuals in the United States, an icon of the Black Liberation Movement. Angela Davis was set to receive the prestigious Fred L. Shuttlesworth Award from the Birmingham Civil Rights Institute, but on Friday, the board voted to rescind the award. During our conversation, Angela Davis talked about anti-Semitism. I think this, this uh, ideological uh, effort to equate uh, anti-Semitism anti with um, well—with um, much-needed critiques of the policies and practices of the state of Israel and the expressions of solidarity with the Palestinian uh, people uh, um, should be revealed uh, for, 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 for what it is. Uh, uh, and I am I'm hoping that we will hear more um, Jewish people speaking out. I know that Jewish Voice for Peace has done an amazing job over the last uh, period, uh, and I've done uh, work with JVP. Uh, but I think this is a, a period uh, when, as, as Jews were the first white people to step up during the civil rights era, uh, to, to speak out against racism, uh, uh, I think that we, we need to— in, uh, we need to engage in the kind of conversation uh, that will uh, reveal uh, the, 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 the true meaning of anti-Semitism uh, and um, help us to extricate ourselves from this uh, uh, McCarthyite uh, effort to equate uh, boycott strategies uh, and solidarity strategies with anti-Semitism. Uh, uh, I should say that um, I know that previous recipients of the Fred, the Fred Shuttlesworth Human Rights uh, Award uh, are very angry about what has happened. I received a call from um, uh, Danny Glover. I received a call from Harry Belafonte, both of whom indicated that they will be contacting uh, the Birmingham Civil Rights Institute uh, uh, in, 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 in protest. 
I think these protests have to involve serious conversations uh, about uh, uh, the meaning of anti-Semitism and, and, and how to disarticulate charges of an anti-Semitism uh, from uh, 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 civil rights and human rights strategies that are designed to uh, protect the people of Palestine. Well, let me ask you about the proposed Combating BDS Act, which was included in the first Senate bill of this new session. The legislation aimed to prevent opposition to the Israeli government by allowing state and local governments to sanction any U.S. companies which are engaged in a boycott against Israel. The bill failed to pass earlier this week amidst the government shutdown. Newly sworn in Palestinian American Congress member Rashida Tlaib of Michigan. Michigan criticized the bill on Democracy Now! this week. I agree with Senator Sanders and ACLU and others that see this not as a—see this as an anti-speech, uh, anti-First Amendment uh, bill. Uh, the fact that we have our senators that right now could be voting on opening up our government, they have the bills in their hands, are voting on this, that's distracting us from what is our focus, which is the American people. And I can tell you, you know, looking at— um, this push among even just the states saying that, you know, a po you, you will not employ someone that doesn't sign some sort of allegiance to say that they will not boycott another country. It is literally at the core right there is literally an attack on our Constitution, on our one of the most critical rights that we have in our country is freedom of speech. I cannot imagine our country not having the right to economic boycott. Think about, uh, you know, Alabama, Montgomery. Think about all, Montgomery, Alabama, and all of the around the country, the civil rights movement. That's Rashida Tlaib, the first uh, Palestinian-American woman uh, in Congress, one of two Muslim women, along with Ilhan Omar, part of the most diverse Congress that has been voted in uh, in the history of the United States, more than 100 women serving in the new uh, 116th Congress of the United States. Your response, Professor Davis? Well, I am excited to see the new Congress, uh, and of course, uh, um, I'm very happy that uh, the um, Senate bill, Senate Bill One, uh, did not pass. However, I think it should be uh, pointed out that um, uh, this is uh, not going to be the last we hear about this act to uh, combat uh, BDS. Uh, it reminds me of the McCarthy era. Uh, the um, effort to require people to, in effect, sign loyalty oaths that they re ref that they will not engage in uh, the boycott of the state of of, of Israel. I'm trying to imagine um, uh, how that might have played out uh, during the era of the struggle against apartheid in South Africa, if. Uh, if people in as many states have have, have passed these acts uh, would have been required to agree not to advocate or engage in or participate in um, the uh, boycott of, of South Africa, this is this is absolutely unconstitutional, uh, and it, uh, it 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 harks back to a period of our history which uh, many of us thought we had. Um, surpassed, uh, but it also indicates uh, uh, how important it is to engage in the kinds of um, um, conversations and struggles that will enlighten people as to the implications of, 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 of such measures. The award you were set to receive is named after the civil rights icon, Reverend Fred Shuttlesworth, who led the struggle in Birmingham, Alabama, to end segregation. When he died in 2011, the civil rights leader and Georgia Congress member John Lewis said, quote, when others did not have the courage to stand up, speak up, and speak out, Fred Shuttlesworth put all he had on the line to end segregation in Birmingham in the state of Alabama. This is Fred Shuttlesworth talking about the immediate visceral danger he encountered as one of the leaders of the civil rights movement. The Ku Klux Klan tried to blow me into heaven, blow me away. But you don't kill leaders. You don't kill the idea if you kill the person. 
But God saved me because he had to have somebody to go through a spectacular demonstration of his power to live in Birmingham. And when the detective said to me, he said, if I were you, I'd get out of town as quick as I could. I said, well, the officer, you're not me. And you go back and tell your clan brother that if God could save me through this, I'm here for the duration, and the war is on. That was Fred Shuttlesworth, civil rights icon, his biographer, Andrew Manis, author of A Fire You Can't Put Out, and professor of history at Middle Georgia State University in Macon, has said, since your award was rescinded, I can't even imagine Fred Shuttlesworth hesitating for a moment to honor Angela Davis this way. Fred was willing to work with anybody, regardless of their politics, if they were on the side of freedom as soon as possible, and equality as soon as possible. Possible. He was on board with them, unquote. As you listened to Fred Shuttlesworth, you knew Reverend Shuttlesworth? Oh, yes. Uh, uh, Reverend Shuttlesworth was the, the first um, really uh, rebel leader uh, during the period I was growing up in, in, in Birmingham. I uh, met him. I went to school with his daughter. I remember when his house was bombed. And I also remember uh, that um, oftentimes uh, he was a, a, a lone voice. Uh, uh, eventually, people uh, spoke out and supported him. Um, but he was courageous. Uh, and as the uh, clip uh, uh, from a discussion with him you just played indicates, uh, uh, nobody could turn him around. Nobody could turn him around. And uh, I, I was uh, uh, quite um, proud to have been offered the Fred Shuttlesworth Human Rights Award, which, uh, of course, uh, was uh, promptly withdrawn. Um, uh, but I, um, I think that Fred Shuttlesworth continues to inspire uh, people who are struggling for freedom, freedom not only for— uh, black people, not only the struggle against racism, but in all struggles for justice, uh, for um, against misogyny, against homophobia, for economic rights, uh, uh, for, for global human rights. Well, let me ask you, Professor Davis, um, the top three uh, members of the Birmingham Civil Rights Institute have now resigned over this decision to throw you out. Um, and uh, this is, you know, as the many in the community are demanding that the leadership resign. If this were to be re-offered to you, to honor you, uh, in the name of Fred Shuttlesworth, would you accept that honor? Well, I think the Birmingham Civil Rights Institute not only owes uh, me an apology personally, but— uh, should apologize uh, to uh, all people who stand on the side of justice, uh, uh, should apologize to all people who believe that uh, justice is indivisible. This was not primarily an assault against me uh, as an individual. Uh, it was an assault against uh, um, uh, a whole generation of activists who have come to uh, recognize uh, how important internationalism uh, is. And, 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 and in the words of, of Dr. King, as I pointed out earlier, injustice anywhere is an assault to justice uh, everywhere. Uh, so for the time being, um, I, um, I, I, I would hope that they are uh, considering uh, uh, the possibility of such a uh, a broad apology uh, to people of for whom this rescission was an affront everywhere. Well, Angela Davis, I want to thank you so much for joining us, and I want to wish you an early happy 75th birthday as you celebrate thank next you week. Thank you very much, Amy. Dr. Angela Davis, the scholar and human rights activist, professor emerita at the University of California, Santa Cruz, author of many books, including Freedom is a Constant Struggle, Ferguson, Palestine, and the Foundations of a Movement. 
For more than four decades, Dr. Davis has been one of the most influential activists and intellectuals in the United States, an icon of the black liberation movement. Last Friday, the Birmingham Civil Rights Institute rescinded a human rights award for her and canceled its February 16th gala altogether. But Dr. Davis still plans to go to Birmingham, her hometown, on that date for an alternative event organized by members of the community who are outraged by the Institute's decision. Visit democracynow.org to see our hour-long special with Angela Davis, where she talks about how Aretha Franklin once offered to post bail for her and much more. I'm Amy Goodman. Thanks for joining us.